Length is the time when we reevaluate our lives and make a conscious effort to heed the voice of the Lord calling us back to him. Length is not about us our fasting and our sacrifices for a period of 40 days. Primarily, it is about God's love for us and our continued response to that love. If we have made the journey of Lent successfully, we can enter fully into the celebration of Easter and beyond. Our salvation story began with the biblical stories of the creation of the world and everything in it. It unfolded through God's covenants with the Jewish people for a specific purpose: to reveal God's power, His faithfulness, and His loving kindness to all the nations. It was not only about how the Jewish people worshipped God. but also how they conducted themselves as his people time and again through the years in much the same way that we do the israelites lapsed into unfaithfulness and turned their backs on god until troubles beset them and they cried out to god for deliverance after god had aided them and things settled to being peaceful they forgot about him and went back to their idolatrous ways so god called prophets from among the people to tell them to obey the terms of their covenant with him The prophets also hinted at the future coming of a just and suffering servant king who would lead the people back to God. Despite the prophets' warnings, God's chosen people continued to turn away from God when it suited them. After years of exile in Babylon and continued living under foreign occupation, the Jewish people kept hoping for a messiah a savior to make them a great nation again all through their trouble times god never abandoned his chosen people
when Jesus of Nazareth began his ministry, healing people and teaching them about the kingdom of God. His words were very different from those of the religious leaders of the day. The religious leaders emphasized physical rituals in order to follow God's law. Jesus spoke of selfless love towards fellow humans in order to avail of God's infinite mercy and love. Ideologies clashed. The religious leaders scorned Jesus and challenged him at every opportunity. They began to fear that he would take away their power over the people. But the suffering, neglected, outcast, and the common people gathered in large numbers around Jesus to hear words that stirred them and to experience his kindness and compassion that brought them hope and healing. It was a few days before Passover. 
There was excitement in the air. Jesus was going to enter through the east gate riding a donkey in fulfillment of the ancient prophecies. Was he the Messiah? Was the oppression of Israel about to end? A very large crowd had gathered, waiting in great jubilation. They spread their cloaks on the ground. Others cut palm branches and spread them on the road. Some went ahead of Jesus and others followed him, all shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The whole city was in a turmoil, asking, Who is this man? People replied, saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The joyous procession marched forth into the city. The Romans watched silently from the Antonia fortress, alert for any signs of trouble from the crowd. The chief priests and the Sanhedrin watched uneasily, unnerved that this Jesus of Nazareth could command such a fan following. They wondered what he was up to. They were sure it was not good.
The triumphal march of the king faded away. There was uneasiness in the air over the next few days. The people were wondering, what was their Messiah king going to do next? The authorities, both religious and political, were wondering the same thing. The children of Israel were looking forward to a Messiah who would save them from the yoke of Roman rule, much in the way they had been delivered from their slavery in Egypt. Jesus' actions turned out to be very different from their expectations, and they were disappointed. The Synoptic Gospels tell us that after his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Jesus stormed into the temple and threw out the money changers and tradesmen. The priests could not stand this insult to the temple priesthood as they saw it. Jesus was a troublemaker. Better to get rid of him before the Romans held the chief priest and Sanhedrin responsible for any further disturbance he might cause. They decided to act first. They plotted to do away with Jesus. Jesus experienced his humanity physically, emotionally, and spiritually as all of us do. His unjust trial and brutal death were not less tortuous and dehumanizing just because he knew he was going to be resurrected. It is obvious to us that knowing or hoping that something good might come after the bad does not make the bad any less traumatic or less painful to endure. Yet, as Christians, we must embrace fully the death-resurrection experiences in our daily lives. We ought to seek nothing for our own selfish purposes. We ought to bear our daily trials as Jesus did. 
we ought to seek the will of God in everything we think and do. And we ought to embrace the cross in our lives that leads us into a deep oneness with God. It is finished. The silence stretches for an endless time, like the silence of the grave, the silence of sudden loss when loved ones remain paralyzed in grief, the silence of those who run away from tragedy because they are fearful only for themselves, the silence of betrayal, of shame, self-righteousness, the silence of our own mortality. But listen, it is the silence which amplifies God's unconditional, redeeming love. Deeper than the nails driven into his hands is the love of a father who gives his only son. Deeper than the thorns pressing into his brow is the love of a son who dies for everyone. Love so So divine, deep, deep love, love never failing to hear my call, deep mass, my soul, my life.
is the beginning of a new story for humankind, for us. If Christ had not died on the cross, been buried in the tomb, and risen from the grave, his life of teaching would not have meant a thing to any of us. The resurrection of Jesus is the triumph of life over death, and the certainty that we have been redeemed and brought back to eternal life with the Father. This does not mean that for us, death is no longer an ugly, fearsome reality. But now, we have the confidence of hope in our resurrection because it stands upon the life-giving love of God. We have been given a mandate to continue the story. Each of us is called to carry on the Lord's ministry of love to the ends of the earth. We must continually evaluate what we do and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and his mission and message until he returns in glory. If you ask 
for the king.